Donald Trump is set to deliver a major speech in New York today, where he is expected to outline his full economic plan. Fox News' is Peter Ducey, live outside Trump headquarters right now, with what to expect. Peter, good morning to you. Good morning, Maria. Trump is riding a wave of good polling in the Rust Belt right now, up five points among likely voters in a brand new Ohio CNN poll. And he went next door to Michigan yesterday, once the manufacturing gem of the Midwest, on a day that Ford announced they were moving all their small car production down to Mexico, where it's cheaper, that he thinks he's the only one running for president who understands how much their lives have eroded under President Obama. It used to be, think of this, is this true? It used to be cars were made in Flint and you couldn't drink the water in Mexico. Now, the cars are made in Mexico and you can't drink the water in Flint. Trump last night also alluded to Hillary Clinton's health problems, asking the crowd in Canton, not far from the Pro Football Hall of Fame, if he thought Hillary would be able to stand at the podium for as long as he did. That appearance came a few hours after Trump talked about his own physical fitness with TV's Dr. Oz, an appearance that featured a rare personal critique of Trump by Trump, who said he would like to lose 15 to 20 pounds, but that he still feels healthy enough to serve come January. Uh, if elected at age 70, you will be the oldest person to ever enter the Oval Office. Why do you think you have the stamina for the job. Yeah, just about the same age as Ronald Reagan and, um, and Hillary's a year behind me. I would say just based on my life, I mean, I've had, I, I actually, and I don't know if this makes sense, I feel as good today as I did when I was 30. And later on this morning, Trump will be here at the Waldorf in New York for a speech before the Economic Club of New York, where we're told there won't be any big new policy proposals, but he is going to lay out all of the proposals, all the ideas that he's been making for the last several months as one big package. And we are very curious to see how it is received. Maria? And we know part of that package, Peter, is a 15 percent corporate tax rate uh, that he says is going to really move things in terms of economic growth. Peter Ducey, thank you so much. We'll get back to you as things develop. We want to bring in Texas Congressman Louis Gohmert right now. Congressman, good to see you. Thanks for joining it's us. Great to see you, Maria. What do you want thank to hear you. from Donald Trump today? Well, the kind of thing starting off with just what you said. Uh, if we went to a 15 percent corporate tax rate, you would not be seeing plants moving to Mexico. You would see plants moving to the United States. You would see uh, better drinking water in Flint because they had the industry moving back to make that happen. So that, that I just can't imagine anything better than starting right there, a 15 percent corporate tax rate. You know, we have the highest corporate tax rate in the industrialized world. And uh, I made a trip with some other members of Congress back, and we talked to numerous CEOs in uh, China that were there with uh, their plants. And we were wanting to know, why did you move this industry here? And I thought we would hear over and over, well, labor is so much cheaper, because it is. What we heard over and over were, was that the best workers in the world, the, the best efficiency uh, is in the United States. Yeah. But they moved to China because China would work a deal. Some mm -hmm. they a 15 percent corporate tax rate. Some of them would get a lower rate starting off and then move up. Right. And they said by the time that uh, we started paying, you know, serious income tax. We'd already paid for our state-of-the-art plant. Yeah, well, so wouldn't it be great to see those plants being built back here again? And it can happen at that tax rate. I totally get you in terms of the tax rate and, and its impact oh, I know you do. On, on, on corporations. But let me ask you this, uh, Congressman. You're, you're a conservative. This is, you know, you're all about making sure spending is in check, making sure that, you know, the budget is not right. busted. And here we have a plan that people are saying is going to cost <laughs> Trillions. How do you yeah. pay for it? You're comfortable with this with this kind of revenue intake? Yeah, I, I don't think you do pay for it. I think that with the uh, if he follows Arthur Laffer's advice and we make the kind of changes to the tax code uh, that Kevin Brady is talking about, 
then you won't have to figure out how are we going to pay for this new giveaway program. People will be able to keep so much more of their own money that they won't need those kind of giveaways. The the one uh, on child care, that's wonderful. What I would rather see is instead of paying women to have children out of wedlock, why don't we do the kind of thing that Trump's talking about for working women? Say, we're going to make sure you, you are able to take care of daycare so you finish high school yeah. instead of paying people, rewarding them to drop out. Uh, the government should never be in the business of luring people away from their potential and into ruts. And sure. that's what the government's done since uh, Lyndon Johnson. So it'll be really refreshing to have a president listening to people who know that is not the way. That's the way you spend trillions and you don't improve the poverty situation at all. Mike Murphy. So I'm very encouraged. Yeah. Congressman, it's Mike Murphy. I, I agree with yeah, the points that you're making, uh, almost all, all of the points you're making. But now, mm -hmm. today we're going to get uh, Mr. Trump's economic plan. And we've heard for weeks he needs to hit on the economy. He needs to focus on the economy. That's his strong suit. It's uh, Hillary Clinton's weak yeah. suit. And I, I think, you know, we're expecting Wait, what's nothing. what's Hillary's strong suit? If that's her weak one, what's her strong <laughs> suit? I don't... Okay, fair enough. But I I think, you know. Oh, I think she has a strong suit that helps hold her straight up and down. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I think with Trump's plan today, I think he's hitting it at the right time. You know, we, we've waited for so long. Where's his economic plan? Why doesn't he get out and hit on this? Well, now that he has the momentum, he's coming out and announcing it today. I think, I, I just want to point out, I think it's a great move by him to bring this yeah. out when the momentum's behind him. I was wondering if you could That's speak right. to that. No, I think you're exactly right, Mike. And I think, uh, listen, uh, I haven't known Trump. I've met him a few times, but I, like Andrew Carnegie talked about, you know, hey, I may not be that bright. I think Trump's brighter than Carnegie talked about, but he always knew how to gather smart people around him. And I'm thrilled with what I've uh, And I know Mike Pence is about to be on your show. Right. And he was on the Hill this week. Uh, Pulling Mike Pence around him, I, I was just really encouraged when I saw Mike on the Hill again. And Karen were up here, and it was just such a great feeling to see Mike here. Uh, I, I see great days ahead. You have somebody on the Hill right now that disdains Capitol Hill. In Mike Pence, you have a guy that's respected in the House, respected in the Senate, and that you really just want to hug when you see him. And so I'm looking <laughs> forward to the advice he's getting, the things he's going to do. And uh, I think we can get away from the giveaways and let people keep more of their money. Uh, so I, I think you'll hear more of that today from Trump. Yeah, well, that certainly will resonate with people. Let me ask you, Congressman, House Republicans reached an agreement to avoid a floor vote on impeaching the IRS commissioner, John Koskinen, until after the, uh, the election, if at all. How did the GOP come up to this decision? People are angry that uh, there has been no accountability whatsoever after the IRS uh, targeted conservatives. Yeah, but, well, I think there would have been absolute fury and it would have worked to very much suppress the vote uh, by conservatives going, what's the use if we had taken a vote today that and, and you would have seen uh, loyal Republicans to the establishment step up and vote to table the effort to impeach the, the low hanging fruit of the most corrupt uh, IRS commissioner. I mean, he's been up here. He's lied to people on the Hill over and over. That's a crime to lie to people on the Hill. Yeah. He has helped obfuscate. He is just, he deserves to be impeached and removed from office. So I think it was a huge uh, development last night for the Republican leadership to say, you know what? Let's don't suppress the vote and cause Republicans to throw up their hands and stay home. Right. Let's go ahead and have now uh, Chairman Goodlatte's had a couple of hearings on Koskinen, but we're going to have another one. And as I stand, it's going to be next week and we're going to be able to take this issue on. And and I hope that it goes as well as I would expect. And then we have an impeachment, whether yeah. it's uh, we're able to do it before the election or not. But I think conservatives should be in, as encouraged as uh, 
conservatives were last night around 10 o'clock when this agreement got reached? Yeah, I, I guess it's just this broader narrative, Congressman. And, and real quick, uh, please, uh, you've got the IRS targeting conservatives. You've got Loretta Lynch meeting with Bill Clinton yeah. two days before Hillary is going to speak with the FBI. You've got the yeah. FBI not even recording the interview, not on the record. Uh, it just feels like all of these agencies have become politicized. Is there anything you can do about they it? Have. Well, yeah, but you start by holding somebody accountable. And if the Republican leadership had sided with the Democrats and tabled this action, uh, I, there would have been an awful lot of people just throw up their hands. Yeah. But they haven't done that. And I applaud Paul Ryan and Chairman Goodlatte for, for stepping up to the plate and say, right. we're not just going to throw this off, you know, table this action. Sure. We're going to step up and we're going to give a chance to make it happen. We're going to encourage conservatives that finally mm -hmm. we're going to step Step up and have some defense of the institution. No, the Senate hadn't stepped up yet. They're still letting the White House run all over them and Harry Reid run all over them. Right. But maybe, just maybe, the Senate will take a little courage from what they see us doing. And when you saw John Fleming, Tim Hules Camp, sure. you saw the Freedom Caucus really taking a strong stand last night. I work with them closely yep. and uh, they're all to be applauded for where we've gotten to today. All right. Congressman, good to have you on the program this morning. Thank Thank you. It's great to be with you, Maria. Congressman Thank you. Gummer.